In the notes page, you will introduce the concept of an object traveling in circular motion around a banked track. And you are also shown how to derive an equation which is commonly used for any questions which does not take into account friction. In this video, we will tackle the same concept, but instead we will derive an equation which does take into account friction. So here is our object traveling around a banked track. Now we know that there is a force of gravity acting on the object, which we will call Fg. There is a normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface, which we will call Fn. And then there's also a friction force acting down the slope. We'll call it F. F. Now, we know that, you know, this object is traveling in circular motion. So the resulting force of all of these forces is going to be the centripetal force, which will act directly to the center of the circle. So that is this one here, Fc. The centripetal force is actually a net force or a resultant force. It's basically all of the other forces added together, which then results in the centripetal force. So in our example here, we can see that the centripetal force Fc is acting to the left. So any forces which has components or which has horizontal components acting to, to the left will be contributing to the centripetal force. So in this case, it's not the gravitational force because that's acting directly down. There is no horizontal component. If we look at the frictional force, yes, it does have a horizontal component which acts to the left. And also the normal force has a horizontal component which acts to the left. So it is the addition of the horizontal components of these two forces, which are added together, which then results in the centripetal force and allows the object to travel in a circular motion. So to find the centripetal force, we need to break down those two forces and find its horizontal components. So I can break down the frictional force. If I draw these dotted lines, so that's the vertical component of the frictional force. And this is the horizontal component. We can do the same for the normal force, just like that. And then drawing our arrows, because force is a vector, and it needs a direction. So that's the breakdown of those two forces. Now let's look at the frictional force. So let's find the horizontal component of the frictional force. If I just use simple geometry, then I can know that this angle here is also theta, and this angle here is also theta, which is right there. So um, let's find the horizontal component. So we can see that it's cosine of theta. So in a cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And this is, if I highlight it here, this is the adjacent. And that is what we want to find, the horizontal component. So we'll call it FH for horizontal divided by the hypotenuse, which is simply our frictional force. So F, F. Now that means F H is equal to cosine theta F F. Now we can do the same for the normal force. So if that's our angle, we want to find the horizontal component, which is this part. So that's the opposite side of the angle. So we're going to have to use sine. Therefore, sine of theta is equal to, again, the horizontal component. So keep in mind that this is a different horizontal component than the frictional forces horizontal component. So we go opposite and we want the hypotenuse. And again, that is simply just the normal force. So Fn, therefore our horizontal component of the normal force is going to be sine theta times F. So now we can finally add these forces together to find the centripetal force. And to do that, it's simply, so Fc is equal to, so frictional force cosine theta plus normal force sine theta. Now actually, there is an equation for the frictional force. And the equation for frictional force is actually a constant. This is called the frictional constant multiplied by the normal force. And the frictional constant just depends on the surface. So if we sub this 
into our equation above, our Fc becomes Fn, frictional constant, cosine theta, plus Fn, sine theta. Now we can see we have a common factor, which is the normal force. So we can take that out, and we have Fn, frictional constant, cosine theta, plus sine of theta. So now we have an equation for the, uh, the centripetal force. Now, if we look at our equation at hand, we can see that we still have an unknown variable, and that is the normal force. And usually in questions like these, we're not given the normal force. So we just somehow get rid of this variable. And to get rid of this variable, we'll be looking at the vertical components instead. So that is, uh, nope, not that. That is these bits. And looking at that, we'll be able to find, um, we'll be able to find an equation for the normal force and then substitute back into our equation that we have at the bottom. Now, the same rule applies as we did for horizontal components. So any forces uh, to the left equals any forces to the right. So here, any force up equals any force down because you know our object is not flying into the air and our object is not sinking into the bank track. It is staying at that position, which means that all the forces up equal all the forces down. So if we look at all the forces acting up, um, it is only the vertical component of the normal force. And we can easily find that. Um, if we know that the horizontal component of the normal force was Fn sine theta, that means the vertical component would just be the opposite of that, which is kind of cosine theta Fn. So Fn cosine theta. So that's the force acting up. Now we know that that force has to equal to any force acting down. Now for the forces acting down, it is the gravitational force and the vertical component of the frictional force. And same thing, if the horizontal component of the frictional force was frictional force times cosine theta, that means the vertical component will simply be frictional force times sine theta. So frictional force sine theta, and it is also the gravitational force, so Fg. So now this equation shows that any forces acting up, which is our left-hand side of the equation, is equal to any force acting down, which is the right side of our equation. Okay, now we have that. Now we can also substitute other equations that we know. So we found earlier that the frictional force is frictional constant times Fn, the normal force. And we also know that the gravitational force is mass times gravity. So Fn cosine theta is equal to the constant Fn sine theta plus mg. And now our entire goal was to find an equation for the normal force. So we can take the normal force to one side and put everything else on the other side. So if, this is, if I move this one to the left-hand side and I factor out Fn, I get Fn cosine theta plus the constant sine theta equals mg. So now, if we move a bit here, Fn is equal to mg divided by cosine theta plus the constant sine theta. So now we finally have an equation for the normal force and we can substitute this into the equation that we had earlier. If we go all the way down here, and substitute it into there. So it's mg over cosine theta plus mu, so that constant or that variable is called mu, sine theta. So finally, centripetal force becomes so mg cosine theta plus our constant, no, there, sine theta times the constant cosine theta plus sine theta. Now, one last thing to do, again, we actually do know an equation for centripetal force, and that's simply mv squared over r. You can find that equation in your equation sheet. So subbing that in, so mv squared over r is equal to, I'm gonna write it down, it's, you know, it's the thing above. We can see that there's m on both sides, so we can easily cancel it out. Therefore, v squared over r is equal to g times constant, cosine theta 
plus sine theta divided by cosine theta plus frictional constant plus sine theta. And that is our final equation. Now, we can test that this equation is correct because if we just assume that there was no friction, that means we make our frictional constant equal to zero. So let's look at that. So if you make a frictional constant equal to zero, this whole thing disappears and this whole thing disappears. So we will be left with v squared over r equals g sine theta, because we know that you know this term just cancels out, disappears, divided by cosine theta. We know that sine over cosine is tan, so that's just g tan theta. And if we make tan theta the subject, we get tan theta is equal to v squared over rg. And that is actually the exact equation that you found in the notes page. Um, which you can use for objects traveling in circular motion around a bag track where we don't assume friction. So this means that our equation that does assume friction is correct. So it is, so we'll just remove these. So that is this equation right here. So this works. So you might be wondering how can you really use this equation because there's a lot going on. So here is an example question somewhere here. So we can see the question says, suppose you want to negotiate a curve with a radius of 50 meters and a bank angle of 15 degrees. If the coefficient of friction between your tires and pavement is 0.5, what is the maximum speed you can safely use? Now you can see I've labeled the variables we're given. We're given the radius r, we're given the angle theta, and we're given the frictional coefficient, and we want to find v velocity. And let's look at our equation. We have everything. We know gravity, 9.8. We're given the constant. We're given the angle, and we're given the radius. So we have all the information required to find the velocity. So we can use this equation. So that is how you derive an equation for an object traveling in circular motion around a bank track where we do assume friction. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. My name is Dev and I am part of a team here at Elucidate where we're a non-for-profit organization that help young people succeed at school. So if you want to learn more about our course content then click here and if you want to know more about us or even support us then you can click here.